Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as Ms. Kelly said, my name is Robert Brown. I am an inspector with the Rhode Island Department of Corrections, the Office of Inspections, the, the Department's Internal Affairs Unit. Um, just by way of a little background, I have 32 years in law enforcement. Uh, my boss to my left and to your right, Chief Inspector Robert Catlow, has 33 years uh, in law enforcement. Uh, we have three other inspectors um, in our unit for a total of five. Um, Inspector Roy Wells, retired from the Providence Police, has 32 years in law enforcement. Inspector Kim Millette, who came up through the ranks at the Department of Corrections, has 34 years in law enforcement. And Inspector Frank Levesque, a retired major from the Johnston Police Department, has 23 years in law enforcement. So all total combined, the five members of our unit have 154 years in law enforcement. Now, when I was hired by the Department of Corrections approximately seven years ago, um, I applied. Uh, there was an advertisement, and there was a job posting, which I printed today from the Human Resources Department for the class title and classification for an inspector. One of the special requirements that's mandated to even apply for this position of an inspector is, quote, must have completed the Rhode Island Department of Corrections Training Academy program for correctional officers or a state or municipal police academy. Each and every member of our unit, Chief Catlow is a graduate of the Rhode Island Department of Corrections Correctional Academy. Inspector Millette is a graduate of not only the Rhode Island Department of Corrections Correctional Academy, but she also did a short stint with the Johnston Police Department where she was a graduate of the Rhode Island Municipal Police Academy. Inspector Wells is a graduate of the Providence Police Academy. I am a graduate of the Rhode Island Municipal Police Academy, as well as Inspector Millette. Because we have not been included in this statute, when the members of our unit were either promoted from within to inspector and chief inspector, and I was hired from the outside as well as my colleagues, we immediately lost our peace officer status by virtue of the fact that we are not included in the statute. We are required to carry firearms in our positions, which we are required to go out and get concealed permits to carry. Some of us have gone through the Attorney General's office, others have gone through the local police chiefs in the cities or towns that they live in. Now, by way of comparison, as Ms. Kelly said, our correctional officers are peace officers. So we recently, in the last year or so, had a, uh, an academy graduate, uh, nearly 80 correctional officers. When those 80 correctional officers graduate at a, after a 12-week academy, after they successfully completed it, at 12 months in a day, by statute, they are peace officers. They have arrest powers that our unit does not have with 154 years in law enforcement. They can carry a gun without getting a concealed carry permit. We cannot. Um, we do not have arrest powers. Oftentimes, where our office are situated on the grounds of the Department of Corrections, we have some buildings that are staffed predominantly with civilian employees from the rehabilitative services side of the department, uh, probation and parole officers. They are civilians. They are not correctional officers. They are not peace officers. Many times we have offenders come in um, on parole or probation violations. They may have failed a uh, urine test, or sometimes they may know there's a warrant for them and they turn themselves in. Oftentimes we, we are the first responders. We are the closest in proximity to respond and yet we don't have the statutory authority to take these offenders into custody. We have to go and stand by and wait until a correctional officer shows up that has peace officer status that can place them into custody. Um, it, it, it is an integral uh, public safety position for the department, uh, and that is why we are here um, asking for this legislation and for the inspectors to be included. It's, it's five members of the Department of Corrections with 154 years of combined law enforcement experience. Thank you. You're next. Oh. Chief, do you have anything? I would just like to say the uh, smartest thing I did was let him go first. <laughs> I couldn't say it any better than that, but I definitely concur with it. Thank you. Thank you. 
We can answer any questions if anybody has any. No. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Just, just a comment, uh, Mr. Chairman. What do you, in Providence, Wells, we were partners in the beginning. <laughs> so I'm not going to go any further than that. And also, way back in the late 70s, oh, God, I just told on myself. But the fact is, in the 80s, there were some issues that, that happened back in the day where a backup off-duty was a correctional officer. And for you to go from that to an inspector, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of this committee, it's one thing to talk about theory, a piece of paper. It's another thing for these good gentlemen and lady to be on the front line and do what you ask them to do. And if they already proved themselves, <laughs> you know where my vote's going with you, my brothers. So let it be at that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.